It's been almost a year to the date since the Federal Reserve started raising interest rates. Markets are now fully pricing in another 25 basis point hike at the next meeting at the end of March. Joining me right now is former Kansas City Federal Reserve President and CEO, former FDIC Vice Chairman, and the Distinguished Senior Fellow at the Mercatus Center, Thomas Honig, is here. Thomas, it's good to see you this morning. Thanks very much for being here. It's interesting. Markets are rallying on what they think they hear from the Fed, and, and there's a discrepancy or a debate on what the Fed is actually saying. What are you expecting from Jay Powell today? Well, I think uh, the, the Fed was a little bit surprised by the January numbers, so he's going to be more hawkish again today, trying to convince everyone that uh, inflation is the priority. They're going to bring it down, so he's going to be, he's going to be pretty hawkish, although he's going to be careful because they're going to want to know if he's going to do a 50 basis point increase or a 25 basis point increase. So he'll, he'll, he'll uh, uh, I, I'd say he'll avoid that uh, question as much as he can. And then they're going to talk about, um, you know, when is, when is this uh, inflation going to be captured? And he's going to talk about the very strong labor market that continues to be uh, uh, moving forward. And when he, that begins to slow, he, he thinks inflation will come down, something along those lines. And um, I, I, I have to tell you, Marie, I find it interesting that um, we're, we keep talking about the recession coming here, and I still, still think there will be one. But I'm, I looked at your graph in terms of the rates. But if you go back to the, uh, the recession in 2008, the Fed actually stopped its, uh, its expansionary policy in the summer of 2004, and the recession really didn't happen until towards the end of 2007. Uh, and then Lehman's didn't happen until the, the September of 2008. So, in, in a sense, we're early, still early in the process of getting this economy brought, and we're following a stimulus period, uh, an expansionary period that was much more expansionary than even the period prior to the, to the 2008 crisis. So, I'm not too surprised that we're still talking about a recession ahead, but I think it is inevitable if they keep raising rates as they probably should. Uh, and if the economy uh, is still recover, uh, sh I should say, still using that very significant stimulus. Remember, the Fed's balance sheet is still over $8 trillion in size. Yeah, and they have promised they're going to unwind it by $95 billion a month, taking a $1 trillion out of liquidity, uh, which is also an issue we've discussed that could be a problem for markets. But I want to stay, stay on recession for a moment. Because it's been said that the rate hikes take a year to actually have an impact. And we're under a year. We're just about a year uh, from when the Fed started raising rates. So, you know, I mean, maybe we haven't really felt the worst here. Is that what you're saying? Well, I, that's kind of what I'm saying. I, I mean, we yeah. are seeing a slow. I mean, the market, obviously. But there's more rates to come, more rate increases. We're not even done raising rates yet. And uh, last time it took years after they stop raising rates. So I think I think they have uh, I think we have a ways to go. I think they have more increases to do because we had a more stimulative period. Uh, but uh, if if they get rates up to five and a half or, or higher, then we will uh, in the second half early next year, uh, I think, begin to really feel the the impact of this uh, tightening this tightening yeah. cycle. And, and you say, you know, the Fed was surprised or must have been surprised to see those huge numbers in January. Uh, frankly, Thomas, I think a lot of people were surprised. 517,000 jobs created in January. What do you make of that? Um, and, I, I mean, I, I assume we're going to see a revision, a downward revision for January when we get the jobs numbers. Well, I, I think we will see a downward revision, but still, they're going to be very high. But I think that yeah. also reflects the fact that we're— Coming off a uh, pandemic, we had enormous stimulus, enormous transfer payments to people to not work. Those ran off, so we began, began seeing people, you know, having to go back to work, wanting to go back to work. And, and so you saw that take place. And the demand for labor is still strong because the economy was uh, so uh, expanded with the monetary policy that went on uh, during the pandemic. It was, it was an enormous increase in the balance sheet, a doubling again. And so that's going to take time to work off. So we're, yeah. we're reasonably early in the adjustment process, despite uh, the fact that we've, we've seen a lot of tightening. 
So is your best guess uh, a recession later this year, or is it a 2024 affair? I mean, Chairman and CEO of Bank of America, Brian Moynihan, is predicting a recession, saying that our base projection is for a recession to occur in the U.S. economy beginning in the third quarter of 23, uh, going into 24. Is that how you see it, Thomas? Well, I, I think some, I mean, those are good. That's a good range of time because you don't know for sure. You know, what is the Fed going to do at this next meeting? How many more increases is it going to do as it tries to bring the inflation down? Are they going to go too far? If they go, if they get, start going to 50 basis points or they go 25 basis points through the summer, then your recession may come later in the year or early 2024, and it may be more difficult. I mean, it may be a harder recession. So, uh, you know, we don't have answers to those questions, but I do think the one uh, one thing I feel fairly confident about is that as they continue to raise rates and as the economy begins to feel that and they, and they reduce that balance sheet and take that liquidity out, we should have a recession in late 2023 or 2024. Um, odds are very high that we should do that. Now, yeah. if, if for some reason yeah. that back off quickly, well, then that could delay things again. Well, I think it's extraordinary that the Fed was still buying securities like three seconds before it started raising interest rates, right? I mean, okay, you know, we got March 17th a year ago was the first 25 basis point hike. But, Thomas, they were still, you know, loading up that balance sheet weeks earlier. I, I, I kept making that point. I mean, you, you had this was an enormous increase in money. This was uh, in, in terms of high powered money. This was a very stimulative policy. Up to a year ago. I mean, we, yeah. we I, I, never in our history we've we been that stimulative in that short a period. And uh, to expect that we would have it immediately slow down, inflation would come down to 2%, is just uh, unrealistic, I'm afraid. So we have a ways to go, is what, what I'm saying. But I think inevitably, as they tighten increasingly, then we will get to a recession in late 2023 or early 2024. All right. Thomas, it's always a pleasure. Thanks so much for your insights on all of that. Great to talk with you again. Thomas Honig joining us. We'll see you soon.